John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later, we're going to talk about the minimum wage law. Boy, we need that here and fast, right? Well, we'll find out. But first, one of our favorite political friends, that surly Democrat, Miller Hudson, former so many things, you know, former state rep, right. former uh, uh, party chairman, party chairman. He's like every other liberal, you can't hold down a job. It's, it's amazing. Hey, I, I, I thought we'd talk first a little bit about inside baseball. Right. Uh, that both the Republican Party here in the state and the Democratic Party had some real interesting shakeups in their last little elections. And we don't really think of party structure anymore because so much of the election is done by outside organizations and 527s and all these other groups. Uh, but there's still this need for the party to do primaries and other things. Uh, let's right. let, let's start with the re Republican primary. Yep. Ryan Call was the party chair. Uh, under his watch, the Republicans took back the Senate. Uh, Udall was kicked out, and somehow he got he got kicked out of his seat in favor of Steve House. How right. how and why? Well, you know, on, on this, this one, I have to tell you what I've been told. <laughs> I, wa I wasn't in the room, but, uh, you know, Brian, from all exterior uh, observations, seemed to be doing a great job. Uh, he had success uh, uh, after uh, uh, maybe an initial two years, it was kind of tough. But I, I think the problem, and, in, and when we get to the Democrats, we talk to it uh, about this as well, is, is that, the, that the folks with the money, the folks who are driving the elections, also now have their fingers in the party leadership races. And it's hard uh, for the, the party chairman, if they can't get along with the folks who are writing the checks, the people who are writing the checks will find somebody they can get along Although, with. Although, I would take the other side of that, which is, you know, the, the, it seems like the guys who were writing the checks were probably Ryan Call uh, folks. I mean, you, you think about uh, most elected officials uh, supported him, uh, former Governor Owens, and uh, of course, Cory Gardner, and I think most uh, elected uh, Republicans around the state on uh, statewide seats, with the exception of Cynthia Kaufman, and that you know the Tea Party right. folks, the the more hardcore conservatives, are like w always very angry about about what was seemed as an establishment Republican uh, uh, chairman, and that dynamic plays out. It's it's it, it's amazing how the inner fighting inside party politics is. It's savage. Well, it's, it's much like Henry Kissinger's famous quote about academic politics. It's so vicious because the stakes are so small. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but, but what I heard from my Republican colleagues and those who are close, the, the, the party chair today has to balance uh, being friendly with the folks with the money but can't get in bed with them. Right. And, and there was this sense that uh, Ryan was a little over-involved. There were uh, uh, primary candidates out there that were getting blasted by re Republican 527s, anonymous of dark money. Uh, he also put together campaigns. an independent expenditure committee, which a lot in the party said, no, that's not in the role of the party. Uh, yeah. And so that angered a lot of folks. And, and, but, but if you're a candidate out there and, and you feel like he was playing ball with the people you knew were trying to blow you up, uh, hand grenades were coming in through the window and you were trying to throw them back how out how in much, the street. How much of that is, is imagery and versus reality? I mean, I, I, since I, I well, see that if, one pretty if, close. If people believe it, it's real. That's a fair, fair <laughs> point, fair point. I don't know why anyone wants to be a party chairman. It seems like one of the most thankless jobs. Here, here's what happens. There are ugly primaries. And if, um, um, if you don't vet the candidates and uh, Dan Mays comes through, it is your fault that you didn't vet the candidates and stop the guy who couldn't win from winning the primary. However, if uh, the other guy gets through uh, what it is, you're playing favorites. You, know, you, you can't win for losing right. in, that, in that position. I, I, speaking from experience, it is, in fact, the most thankless job in all of politics because you're, you're also required to be a referee. Uh, and that means that you got to take sides from time to time. And you get a nasty primary going on. Sometimes you have to just go and stop the bloodletting. Uh, or, or neither of your candidates has a snowball's chance in hell come November. See, I, 
I, I think back of an older time, and maybe this is this is more uh, <laughs> my memory. But where where a guy like Bill Armstrong in the Republican circles could go to to a couple primary guys who are fighting, and go, you're both wonderful people. I tell you what, you do it this time, and I promise you, next time you will be able to do this. And they all go, yes, Godfather, and 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 do it. That 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 doesn't happen anymore. No, for a bunch of reasons. One of them is, frankly, term limits. I right. mean, you know, the, the openings only come every eight years. Uh, almost no one's willing to take on an incumbent after they've lost the, uh, I mean, they've won their yeah. first election. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the, the godfather has no juice. Let's talk about the Democratic uh, right. uh, infighting, because you know, from my point of view, you, you Democrats, you've got everything. It's clockwork over there, baby. <laughs> you know, you move and there's somebody there to hand you the money and there's somebody there to take it. It's, there are no personality conflicts in your world. Not true, not true. As, as I always like to say, my adversaries are Republicans, my enemies are Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think it's, it's, it's really true in, in, in both parties sometimes. But, um, you know, l l let's look at Rick Palacio, the guy who's, whose uh, job was on the line this time, who nearly lost it, uh, may have lost it without some last minute jiggering of delegates, and we'll, I'll get to that in a second. But, but basically, uh, in 2012, coming into that election, uh, the decision was made in Washington, D.C. that Rick Palacio would be the Colorado uh, Democratic Party really? chairman. He well, well hang, 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 hang on. You know, I don't care if you're an R or a D or unaffiliated. One thing that never flies here is when somebody out of state parachutes in and says, Boys, let me tell you how it's going to be. You know, what was the old, you know, the movie, the FBI comes in and goes to the local uh, police chief. We got it from here, guys. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, we can, we can just simply look at, 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 at what happened. Uh, Rick Palacio, who is a Colorado boy, grew up in, in Pueblo, uh, was working uh, in the congressional office of Steny Hoyer, the House Majority Leader, at the time that suddenly it was announced with the support of the entire Democratic congressional delegation that he would be returning to Colorado to run for uh, chair. And everybody pulled uh, the wagons together and said, Rick's our guy. And at the time, there was no person of any prominence that really wanted the job, and so he got it. And I mean, he had to move out here. For a while, he was commuting back and forth. Uh, finally got himself settled uh, and uh, made some, some real serious mistakes, uh, in, at least in terms of uh, like how he was perceived. He um, tended not to return phone calls, tended not to respond to emails, uh, had no real sense of who in the party had muscle and who didn't. Uh, and those who did have muscle and didn't get their calls returned, uh, as, as a, a, a wonderful quote, and I never uh, have been able to figure out who said it, is that in, in politics... I, I, I said it. You said it. Yeah. Your friends come and go, but your enemies tend to accumulate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was what so caught, up, caught up with Rick Palacio. So uh, after four years, there had been just a few too many uh, of these mistakes, and uh, suddenly he had a serious opponent, uh, two opponents, uh, and, and then in, in a just a bizarre kind of dust up, the night before the state convention, we, we have a 1976 requirement that our delegates be balanced, male and female, half and half. Really? And, yes. Is this only on the Democratic side? Or? On the Democratic side. Good God, you people are backwards. <laughs> well, in 1976, it probably seemed like a good idea. And uh, they decided that uh, the election wouldn't be valid. Do you, have, do you have something, how many blacks, how many Asians, how many straights, how many homosexuals, uh, uh, how many people like garlic, how many people like chocolate? I mean, what, what, that, what, else are that, you, what else are you engineering over there? <laughs> so Mr. Palacio appointed uh, roughly 40 uh, delegates the night before that were like super delegates appointed uh, to serve, uh, all men, uh, and he was reelected by a little over 30 votes. Now, 
uh, you can draw your own conclusion whether that influenced the result. The, the message that was coming from the National uh, Committee in Washington was that this would be a sin that could be challenged in court if you didn't fix this imbalance. It certainly looked to those who wanted to replace Rick uh, as stuff in the ballot box. I, I can tell you're very excited about this. <laughs> uh, I, I, let, me, let me ask yeah. you kind of a larger question. The role of the party in Colorado has really changed. I mean, now that everything is outsourced yes, yes. thanks to campaign finance laws, and thanks to the way that the Democrats built this wonderful system of infrastructure, and uh, you know, and we're trying our best. But you mm -hmm. know, it, the, the party, you run primaries, all right? Right. And the idea that primaries sometimes you don't get the guy who can win in the general. So you have it's very highly leveraged for mm -hmm. those people who vote in primaries, which drives me crazy. My pet peeve. Why you're not registered with a party makes no sense. I'm an independent. No, you're an idiot. Because if you're registered with a party, you have leverage when you vote in those primaries. And right. before that, you can you can vote at the assembly. Before that, you can vote at, at the caucuses. I mean, that's a lot of power for a small group of people to, to chart the course. Right. And a lot of people have been talking, no, Colorado's got to change it. Maybe we need open primaries. Maybe we need this. Give me, give me your thoughts on it. Is I, I like the primary system. I like the idea that Republicans choose Republicans, Democrats choose the Democrat. But, but is it is it is it past its prime? Uh, it may be past its uh, sell-by date. Why? Uh, well, the, the 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 argument that's made is that you get extreme right candidates on the Republican side. You get maybe not extreme, but certainly further left candidates on the Democratic side than you would get otherwise if it was a more open process. Um, I, I sat at a, at a, at a meeting with uh, 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 two former governors, uh, Dick Lamb and, and Bill Owens, and, and there's, there's a movement afoot out there to put an open, ball, uh, uh, open primary ballot initiative uh, on the election in uh, 2016. Now, uh, I don't know who's behind this or whether it'll really happen or whether it will materialize, but it would be essentially the California reform, which says uh, that, you know, uh, on election day, any uh, independent, unaffiliated voter can come in and say, I want to vote in a Republican primary. What about petitioning on? We'll walk out here, less yeah. than a minute left, but. If I can go through the caucuses, I can go through the assembly if I want to get on the ballot, but I can also petition on. Right. And so why do we even have the caucus process and the assembly process if you can just petition on to the primary ballot and you're on the primary ballot? Well, I think more and more candidates are ignoring the caucus process entirely uh, as a result. It, it, it has intrinsic value if you believe that you should have strong political parties that stand for something. Yeah, we don't need we don't need that no, stuff. No, why do we want it's, that? It's, it's, it's <laughs> no, you know, if you want your job back, why didn't if you know, if you hated what, going, what was going on in the Democratic Party, why didn't you run again? Come on, <laughs> come on, you you love that job. Uh, two years of brain damage was sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> Miller, thank you. you Stay tuned. Time.